All right, so uh, I wanted to talk about my experience. I wanted to talk about my experiences since 2005. I was out by the airport. I've already told that story and I saw it flying humanoid. And it had a, a dog hanging on the side. Uh, after that experience and doing the research of what Jeff Rents had on his uh, website, um, I came and found that it wasn't just so bizarre as I thought that there were other people seeing the same thing. It was the second sighting that happened here close to home up on the hillside. Uh, Bob and his son Jeremy had come by with their elk. It was a five point, Jeremy said. And Daniel and I were in the driveway and we uh, were talking about my sighting and from, from my driveway clear across town going up the hill we saw a huge Bigfoot and he was big. Uh, 12 15 feet tall and he took that gap between the water tower and the trees in just a few seconds I I really started getting into it then because I became an instant knower my first my first real experience happened probably in 1999 at the time, I didn't think it was a Bigfoot experience. I only thought it to be a unexplained experience. I was with the kids and my brother, and we'd hiked up a hill up in the Blue Mountains. And we were heading to Abe's Nose, and we were following a, a big old seven-point buck. We were going real quiet. He was about... 60 to 75 yards sometimes about 100 yards from us and he kept stopping and looking back and we'd creep up on him but we had found a perch between these two trees that were racked up and there was a black stuff all over there was a black stuff all over the trees that I thought was blood and I'd stepped down in this bowl shape and got this eerie feeling that I should go back and I stepped back and noticed the bowl shape in the path and I looked up and I could see the mud caked perch on the hillside and my brother and I we went up and climbed up on that perch and we decided that it was probably Bigfoot because there's a huge handprint there and there was hair and stuff but we talked about it that night and talking about Bigfoot and I just I really couldn't find myself to believe it was a Bigfoot. So, we go back to the cabin, and uh, that night the dog wouldn't go outside, he was acting real freaky. So, at one point, we heard big old thumping thuds following us towards the cabin there, and we all huddled in the middle of the cabin and we were all a little bit scared dog wouldn't go out he hid under the table and under the bed and then something come up and started hitting the corner of the cab and trying to knock it off the stilts and uh next morning 11 feet off the ground there's shingles missing off the side of the cabin so dixie's brother bob came into the picture the following year telling him about that story that was in 2000 and at that time he he was hanging out with a, a girl named Linda and Linda's dad was Paul Freeman so through Bob I was able to get a meeting with Paul Freeman and I told him my story that happened the year before and Paul man he had some stories to tell he was a really cool guy he showed me a lot of casts and hair and samples of scat and poop and man he really showed me a lot of stuff and he all but convinced me I still wasn't convinced I was still that skeptic but that sighting I had in 2005 out by the airport um, I didn't just see it flying guys I got in my car drove down the side road got down in front of it and watched it come at me and 
I got close enough to it to see its face, its eyebrows, and it was a patty. It was a Patterson Bigfoot. And so, in 2006, uh, almost a year had passed, and I was walking. Well, I was I was walking down by the house one night, and I heard a weird scream up on this hill up here. And so I started really trying to listen to the scream. And it, I, I went online. I matched it with a couple from Seattle. I thought to myself, okay, that sounds like Bigfoot. And it was, uh, I think it was late August, early September. And for the next three months, we heard it on a nightly basis. It would be up on the hill. And it would be on that hill. Clear down at the other end of town, and it'll be clear over there across town up on the other hill, all in about 30 seconds. And that means it was hauling, you know what. So, uh, I'd got involved online with a place called Bigfoot Libs, and had posted some things on there, my thoughts and my experiences. And then the next year, after November came around that year, it stopped and so all the following year nothing happened then in 2007 the same thing happened again for the next three months starting in October I believe it was or September it was early September and it did again for three months and I really started becoming convinced that we had Bigfoot roaming the top of these hills out here so I started to do a little bit more digging into the screams and everything and listening to the recordings from the Snoqualmie and Snohomish screams that are online. And I found one there. The Snoqualmie screams sounded exactly like what we was hearing. And so the following year, I was waiting and I was ready. Um, September rolled around, but nothing happened. And then October rolled around and nothing happened. But then one night out of the blue in November, I was with my daughter, Destiny. We heard a scream up on the hill. So we got in the car and raced down because we were excited. We were waiting for it for so long. And we jumped in the car and we got right up here behind me. And we heard it up on the hill. We got out of the car, heard it scream on the hill. And about 10 seconds later, it was only 20 feet away on this ledge right there. And it screamed in our face. And the scream, the only way I can describe it, and I've said this before, sounded like 200 women being murdered at once. And it vibrated my body, made all the hair stand up on my skin. And to this day, I can still hear it when I think about it. It was the most profound experience I ever had with that Bigfoot. So we had raced down around the road when it went back up over the hill, screamed again after screaming at us about 15 seconds later and it was clear up over the hill. So we got in the car and raced down around the corner and down the road and we didn't hear it. We got out of the car, we didn't hear it. We're standing there for a few minutes and uh, all of a sudden I hear this big old shh and it was like something 45 feet away. All of a sudden it's five feet away and it was one big shh. Like that, like the sound of nylon pants. And I found it quite unique to uh, experience that. I had like a feeling of 3D radar all around me. I knew that my protective circle was uh, penetrated. So I learned then what it was like to um, be scared <laughs> of the unseen. Uh, Destiny and I both jumped back in my car and we didn't like that experience. It was probably the most unnerving. Where'd Harmony go, Dixie? Where? So anyway, uh, the next time I saw it wasn't again until, let me think about it, it was uh I went a lot of years doing Bigfoot research and never had another sighting or another experience. Um, in 2015, I was with my uncle 
it was uh, the last day of February 2015 and we were out by Clicker Mountain and I was taking him you know we were having a big old discussion about Bigfoot and he just stopped the car and there's Bigfoot took a couple of steps up the hill and stopped and squatted and I got out and all I could get was a good shot of it squatting there and he just sat there and watched us and that made a believer out of my uncle because he saw it walk and I saw it take a step before it squatted so I knew that it wasn't a log. I went back a couple weeks later and filmed the area and there was nothing there and some of, me, some of my subscribers remember that video. Um, it's on my other channel one of these days. I'm going to have to pull that back out if I can find it. Um, my next sighting or my next bit of research came the next morning 18 hours later. My daughters were 180 miles away from home at a concert and um, Dixie, are you going to go drop that off to her? I'm going to turn around and go back the other way, okay? So anyway, all right, I'll see you guys back at the house, Harmony. Why? You want to come on? I'm heading that way. Okay. So anyway, 18 hours after me and my Uncle Dan had seen it in 2015, my daughters went to a concert, and I've told that story, and you guys can see the links here. But the girls saw it come up on the edge of the road as they were going around a curve and Harmony and Destiny both say it was eight nine feet tall uh, as high as a street sign so I went up and started researching the Spokane area west of Spokane and my research did a lot of online research about that area and sightings in the area and that's when I really got deep into the Elkana Walker story of the Spokane Indians. The Spokane Indians had a legend in 1840 that they told Elkanah Walker about giants that lived west of Spokane. Well, I had gone up there and researched that whole area really good after the girls sighting about 10 days later and it just got bizarre from there, you guys. I started to realize that they're watching from a lot of different places all the time. And they do have the power to cast images at you and make you see things that are bizarre. And my camera picks up a lot of stuff I don't. People wonder why, how come you don't see them when you're out there? Well, I do occasionally. See something, but I'm not sure. It's not definitive enough, so. But when I go back and I do analysis on my videos, I'm often seeing stuff that my eye wasn't looking at, you know, that was in my, my view area but I, I wasn't looking directly at it so I didn't see it so anyway I I've had several near-death experiences from childhood to date I've had six or seven and so I have some some other experiences that may play part in how I see things um, I just want to let you guys know that I, I'm not going to go away. I'm not going to back down just because people don't like what I saw or want to ridicule me because of what I saw or because they want to ridicule me of what I see. Uh, I don't believe in the word pareidolia. Pareidolia is for the non-seer. That's an excuse word for those who don't want to be open-minded and see things from a spiritual point of view. And I'm not saying religious point of view. I'm saying spiritual point of view. Spirituality and religion are two different things. And you can define spirituality many different ways. So, anyway, I wanted to tell you guys a little bit more about me and my experiences so that you understood where I'm coming from. Um, it's those Bigfoot after I found that, that cave up there, that shelter under stone up there in West Spokane area after experiencing that that I became more informed of where these creatures hide and what they're capable of doing and I I'll have to agree with some of the other squatters out there that say that they're in big numbers I think they're in greater numbers than we ever imagined so anyway something else I wanted to throw in is how many sightings other people in this community have had in the surrounding areas around me. 
my research over the years my research over the years I've found just a minute my research over the years I found that you know there were other splotches out here Wes Summerland, Paul Freeman there were some writers too um, Harry Drake, he's someone I used to work for when I was younger I used to clean his windows and Vance Orchard, he was another writer that wrote about the sightings and stuff around the area but over the years I've discovered almost 50 of them I think it was 52 my last count I used to have them all mapped out and uh, I believe it or not someone stole my map um, but I used to have all these sightings figured out and I live right about the center you can go 10 miles in any direction and even farther out and there are sightings one of the coolest sightings I ever came across was the Starbucks sighting of a white Sasquatch that had a glowing aura I found that one to be interesting but I just want you guys to know that I live in a hot zone I live where people see hear feel sense and experience Bigfoot and just because everybody doesn't or because most people don't want to talk about it doesn't mean that it's not happening when you're like me and you you ask questions and you ask people and you confront people about their I ask a lot of people you ever seen a Bigfoot and believe it or not more often than not people will say yeah they'll start telling me about a story or an incident they had they didn't want to talk about so um, I'm just letting you guys know that I only research in hot zones known areas when I'm out by the lake it's only because BFRO got me to look out there to begin with it was Brian Smith his discoveries Harley Michaelis found tracks in 2000 and they were nine inch prints with 58 inch spans in snow barefoot and it was a small Sasquatch and I've gone out to the lake myself and found 9 inch prints 60 inch spans and I've recorded it for you guys all to see and so I got a lot of evidence on my channel that just isn't being seen and sometimes I feel like the evidence is what videos I have that aren't getting the attention they deserve while some of the other stuff that's not even as great as my evidence uh, gets better attention so anyway you guys have been at this strong um, again in 2013 I picked up heavy and started researching it online I'd, I'd been involved in some law enforcement um, research for a law enforcement agency that took me a while to get out of it I didn't want to do that research anymore after some incidents that I don't want to even talk about but I uh, I basically did a lot of computer research and analysis and got into this field of analysis and after after that I got back into the Bigfoot and it's been strong ever since so you guys uh, I take my work serious I research I investigate I experience I feel them and there are times my intuition tells me that I shouldn't go any farther or I should get out of there and I follow my intuition I don't carry a gun I don't own a gun I carry bear mace occasionally if I feel I need to um, I love nature and I have been trying over the years to tune in more and more to nature so I'm a, I'm a person that believes in great spirit I believe you should pick up trash I believe you shouldn't litter um, all those things are good for earth I'm a mother earth type person I believe earth is sacred and it's being mistreated so with, with all that being said and done I, I find myself to be a unique researcher Sasquatcher big footer and I don't try to copy nobody else I walk and blaze my own trail and uh, I don't follow any role models uh, that's why you, you see me doing my work my way so the old saying goes I did it my way peace out you guys